in 2003, a network engineer at Amazon named Benjamin Black is working on the IT architecture transition. And he's working with Chris Pinkham, who is his boss, who in fact oversees all of network engineering within IT at Amazon. And Chris reports to Rick Dalzell, the CIO of Amazon. So the two of them, Benjamin and Chris, they write a six pager about how they actually are going to restructure the network engineering part of the IT architecture to the new model that the company is moving to. And at the end of this document, supposedly, they mention that with the architecture that they have in mind, Amazon might actually be able to use that same architecture to sell virtual compute servers as a service to third-party developers. And indeed, Amazon could do that. Now, here's where things get murky, because that document definitely does exist. This idea that most of it is focused on here's how we're going to execute our plan. And also, we could sell that infrastructure as a service. Here's where Ben Black and his blog post on the subject, and then in future interviews he gives with Network World and others, are very insistent that they then showed this to Jeff Bezos. The proposal made its way to Jeff Bezos. Yep, I think first to Rick and then to Jeff. And he greenlit their project. Yes, separately from the rest of AWS. And what I can't tell is, did this, before it got in front of Jeff, get merged into Andy's proposal and it was sort of greenlit as one big thing? Or were there actually two different concurrent efforts? So Chris is actually from South Africa. And right around this same time, he and his family want to move back to South Africa, leave Seattle, move back to Cape Town in South Africa. So he goes to Rick, his boss, and says, hey, I'm actually going to leave and move back, move the family back. And Rick is like, oh, no, 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 no. We're in the middle of this huge architecture transition. This is a key moment in the company. You are a super valuable person at the company. What if we do the same thing we're doing in Palo Alto with A9 and Lab 126? We'll set up a new Amazon subsidiary in Cape Town, South Africa, that you can lead, and then we can retain your talents, and we can figure out what that new subsidiary will do. So Chris is like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Chris and Rick start thinking about this, and they decide, well, we just had this idea, Benjamin and I, in that paper we wrote about selling virtualized servers to third parties. What if we work on that at the new subsidiary? So they do. Benjamin doesn't come along, but Chris and a really, really great engineer named Chris Brown. And from what I can tell, this is sort of where Ben Black's involvement ends, where he was part of pitching the idea, but is not actually a part of building the thing that they're going to build in South Africa. Yep. So Chris and Chris go off to South Africa. They start working independently on this compute server idea, and they do. That becomes EC2. It's that team in South Africa that builds EC2. Bradstone writes in the Everything Store, quote, EC2 was born in isolation with Pinkham talking to his colleagues in Seattle only sporadically, at least for the first year. Pinkham later said that the solitude was beneficial as it offered a comfortable distance from Amazon's intrusive CEO. Quote from Pinkham, I spent most of my time trying to hide from Bezos, Pinkham says. He was a fun guy to talk to, but you did not want to be his pet project. He would love it to distraction. Hilarious. You can start to see even in these very public, reasonably nice quotes that there's enough tension between Chris Pinkham and the Bezos Jassy leadership that even in the official Amazon things that they put out about the development in South Africa, like Chris Pinkham's name is sort of nowhere to be found, even in this South Africa specific blog post about the history of EC2, there's clearly chafing between Chris and the leadership. Yep. In Andy Jassy's infamous one-star review <laughs> of the Everything Store on Amazon.com, in one of the several passages where he talks about how Brad had it all wrong, here's a quote from Andy. The vision document proposing the AWS business and outlining the initial set of services for AWS including our compute service, EC2, was finished and presented to the executive team in September 2003. 
I wrote the document and was lucky to have the help of several people in putting it together. This was about a year before Chris Pinkham moved to South Africa to build the initial version (laughs) of EC2. Chris played an integral role in the definition, team building, and product building of EC2, despite leaving before EC2 was launched. So clearly there's some bad blood here, but uh, my thoughts, I want your thoughts too. I just find this whole thing ridiculous because A, of course it doesn't matter. Right, who cares? But the most ridiculous thing is that what I think actually happened here, which is there were multiple teams working on multiple related things within the company, That's how Amazon prides itself on running. Decentralized innovation. That was the whole point of this whole freaking exercise was decentralized, let teams innovate. What's Jeff's uh, invent and wander, you know, is the kind of mantra of him and the company. I think that's what actually happened. The official version now of the AWS history of it was all centrally planned. It was all in that 2003 document. That just seems sort of silly to me and counterproductive. Yeah. I agree. The other thing that becomes clear is it's really not about the idea. It's about the execution. And I know this is a trope. So to make it a little bit more specific, it can be about the idea. If you define the idea as the hundreds of micro ideas that comprise the main idea. But if you're saying the idea is something articulatable in a sentence, well, that's pretty much worthless. And maybe even in a vision doc, it's about the thousands of micro decisions you make while executing it and actually doing the work to execute it that sort of ends up mattering. But, you know, history is written by the victors, so we're seeing some of that play out here. The other thing that's very clear is Andy Jassy is just a brilliant strategist and fantastic leader. And so, of course, someone like him in the organization would end up actually running it. So I don't even know why there's dispute over, well, it was my idea. It's like, well, who cares? Who's going to end up turning this thing into a world-changing business? Who got the truth? Mm. Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Sit me down. Say it straight. Another story on the way. Who got the truth? Who got the truth now? Hmm.